Hello. Thank you for joining me on Think Tech Hawaii. I am Shana Park, your host for Money Talk. My guest is Ampi Champthon. He is an attorney that practices in the state. Welcome to the show, Ampi. Hi, Shana. Thank you for the opportunity to share a little bit more about estate planning. Yeah, I'm so glad you're here to, you know, share your expertise. And can you tell us a little more about yourself and, you know, how did you get into the estate planning? Hi, a uh, local boy here. Um, grew up in Kalihi, graduated from Lati High School, and then spent um, about oh, close to 10 years at the university for varying degrees and then ended up going to law school. I've been an attorney um, for about 12, 13 years now, and then recently um, became full time in estate planning. Oh, wow. And, you know, what made you go into estate planning? It just made sense in the areas of, um, in my career, in terms of working with families. I've been an advocate for families for a long, long time as a social worker and, um, you know, uh, we do work as well in financial education and making sure that families have proper protection. Part of that, that foundation of protection is about protecting your estate in that we want to ensure, you know, families that work really hard is able to now exercise their liberties in making sure that what they work hard for goes to their family. Yeah. I think that is very important, you know, what you do and the education aspect, because we do work, I mean, everyone works really hard, but especially in Hawaii, we work really hard, you know, to keep up with the cost of living and everything. And it's important to protect their assets. So, um, Going into that, I know you have some slides and, you know, can you share more about, I, my understanding is that a will is good enough. That's all I really knew about estate planning. And, you know, yet I always see celebrities or, you know, acquaintances uh, get taxed or sort of taxing that happens, you know, when they pass away. So why is that? Yeah, it, it's amazing. You know, when, when I do presentations or workshops, education, with families in the communities. And we asked that question of whether, whether somebody has their estate plans, the majority of people, which is actually the ma minority of people would raise their hand. Uh, very rare do I even have 30% like, of the room uh, share that they have their estate plans done. And then yet those 30% that do raise their hands when I ask them what they actually have, and they'll tell me they have a will. And, a will simply is just not enough. And I'm glad that we have this opportunity to talk a little bit more about this will misconception because you hear it all the time. And my last will and testament, my last ego, the will is not going to do um, what you're, you're thinking that it will do. Okay, so. Uh, so right here, it says no estate planning equals probate. And that word is out there a lot especially, you know, more talks about too is when celebrities pass away. And if they don't have something in place, I always see that word probate. So, you know, can you explain what is probate, probate and how does that even um, tie into estate planning? Simply probate is a court proceeding where if you don't have your, your things planned, your estate plans done, it has to go to court. The proceeding itself is called a probate in that now the courts will appoint somebody called a personal representative. This person will be responsible to administer your estate. And then the issues with the probate, uh, the whole probate process is that it, there's a lot, a lot of drawbacks. And what that equals amounts to is the loss of control. So why is getting an estate plan so important, regardless if you have assets or not? You, you saw the um, recent uh, articles that just came out with Aretha Franklin, right? Aretha Can you see the slide? Yes. And that was pretty amazing um, that it took, uh, I don't know how many number of years. I think it was about five years. And this goes back to what we had shared a, a few minutes ago when we talked about, you know, like what are the issues that come about when you now 
um, have a, a, just a will. So Aretha Franklin's story, I don't know if you heard about it in the news. Last week, I think maybe two weeks ago, um, the, the courts finally decided which will they're going to use. Okay, so Shana, it goes like this. So she had three wills. The first will that she had, she actually wrote it out. She signed it. She put it into a lock, bo- uh, uh, lock container and then she put, placed it in her, her closet. Mm-hmm. And it was done in 2010. The next will that she did, which you see right there, is what she scribbled in a notebook uh, in 2014. As, and then she had left that now in the seat of her couch. There was a third will that she drafted that actually was done with an attorney in an attorney's office. However, that will was not signed. And then now the wills all say different things. And then, you know, when that happens, guess what comes next, right? The families fight. So all of her sons were fighting as to which will would be the valid will. And hence, when I share with you, like why a will is not enough is um, in that situation, it actually required the will to be probated, meaning it still has to go to probate court. And there's a lot of drawbacks. If you look at the, the will that, sh- that the courts finally decided was going to be valid was the one that they found in, on, uh, in between the cracks of the couch, the, the cushion of the couch, which is this. Uh, yeah. And if you look at it, can you make that out? Exactly what she wanted. Not really. <laughs> yeah. So amazing, right? And, and it's five years, you said, in order for them to determine out of the three wills, they went with that will. Yes. That's how long it took. And these stories, you know, we, we hear a lot about it from the celebrities. And, and so um, it makes it kind of like out of tune with what happens with all of our modest families. Um, Bottom line, if you don't plan, you don't do your estate plan, the state of Hawaii will do it for you. It's just going, what level of probates does it have to go through? And um, to avoid now, there's many, many drawbacks that I mentioned before. And it, it could, it costs a lot of time, waste a lot of money. And then in the fortunate event, it may not do what you thought that you wanted it to do as like right now with Aretha Franklin, we have no idea what's, you know, maybe what her intentions were, what her wishes were. And when you say to that it took five years for the court to come to its decision, do you know exactly how much, you know, she had to pay or it came out of her estate during those five years? I you- didn't see it for Aretha Franklin yet. There are many, many examples of celebrities that went through this process that, again, a lot of money, are you talking in the millions to litigate uh, issues dealing with, you know, probates and because of a lack of planning. Interestingly, you know, these stories that come up that gets shown all over the news, eh, I, I kind of shared this not too long ago with an individual. And he said, yeah, people fight, people fight. And uh, the, my, my two points were one, that there is many, many celebrities, many people that pass away that you never hear about what happens with their fortunes, what happens with their children, what happens, who gets what. You don't even hear a, a nothing. Hey, the reason for that is because they did a proper estate plan. Now, the ones that we do hear about, like, for example, your Rita Franklin's, your, your Prince, your, you know, the Black Panther. Ch- I mean, all these other ones that actually don't get planned is what is now highlighted in the news. And, you know, and then, and then we sit there in awe in how much millions and millions of dollars are wasted okay, because the planning was not done. Yeah. And now that you made that a point, I mean, I keep up with social media. And I, you're right. The only people I do see are the names that you actually named because it's, you know, it was a pretty big deal of how, how much money went to the courts. So what you're saying is that each year that it prolongs each year, you're going to have to pay or it comes out of this seat. Is that what you're saying? And I think more than the financial cost, 
and the emotional burdens that it has on families, the strains. I, I've seen situations where families are forever broken because um, now there is fighting. And I don't think parents or even, you know, grandparents or anybody that works so hard uh, to accumulate this wealth in thinking that they are going to provide it to their children, their grandchildren, uh, ever intended now for the families to be forever fractured. How many families do you know that actually says, yeah, this happened to us, this happened to this, this person's greedy, this person wants this, this person, this person, and so on and so on. And I go, I don't think that's what was the intentions of any one of us, you know, that worked very hard to King Lena Wealth. Yeah. So, and I think, you know, what you're doing, it's such an important job too, because it, it, what you shared, it's all about education and, you know, what we don't know, we don't know, but with you, you know, advocating and helping people out there, you know, what you're saying, not only it saves money, but it saves a lot of emotional time and energy as well. So when, when we talk about the will misconception, the two things that people um, should know, very simple. The first thing is with a will in itself, it, it does not avoid probing. If you create a will, you still need to submit that will to probate. And when it goes to probate, I think it'll, um, we'll talk about this in a couple of slides. There are major drawbacks of why you don't want it to go to probate. Okay. The second will misconception that people um, need to know about is that a will does absolutely nothing. Next slide, please. A will does absolutely nothing to help you when you're incapacitated. So incapacitated means that you are either physically or mentally unable okay, to make decisions. In these situations, a will does absolutely nothing to help you. And then, as you know, you know, in our working financial education, yeah, uh, a majority of us will go through some form of long-term care or being deemed incapacitated in that situation. If you have um, situations where now your family needs to access funds to support you, it, a will will not help you. You still need to go to court. You need to open up a conservatorship. And that's a whole different topic. And bottom line, very costly, take a lot of time. Okay, and a, what a waste of unnecessary cost. So that's the two things that I want families or people that are listening to, to us to know when they hear somebody say, I have a will, just know a will in itself is not enough in terms of uh, creating your estate plan. And a trust is important, is what you're saying. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's one of, okay? In our work here at Estate Planning Group, the next slide, please. You know, be, our, our work in, in a state, you know, planning group is really to look at comprehensive estate planning. Okay? He, all of the documents that are required when you look at a state plan is intended now to avoid all of the things relating to unnecessary costs, unnecessary court interventions. And more importantly, the documents create that situation where you now exercise control. Like control in the sense that I want to do what I'm alive and well, the things that I've created for me and my family. In the event I become disabled or deemed incapacitated, that this will be used to, um, my assets will be used to take care of me and my family. In the unfortunate event when I pass away, I determine who gets what, when they get it, how they get it. Okay? And all at the same time, avoiding all of the unnecessary costs relating to whether it be taxes or legal or court intervention. So um, yes, a trust, but the trust is again, one of the five other documents that we say is necessary. And if you miss any, if any one of those documents are missing, we say you have a puka in your planning. And then when you have a puka in your planning, the potential issues with that is going to be probate. So, so here, 
So what are all the five things to ensure that there's no puka in your planning? It would be a, re a revocable living trust. Okay. A special type of will, which is a pour over will. It, it, funny because the, the last thing I, I didn't say about a will was that a will, when you look at estate planning and a proper estate plan, should be a safety net. Okay. A will should be something we hope we don't ever have to utilize as it relates to our assets. A meaning now, so it's this special type of will called a pour over will, which again, only in the event that we did not properly fund our trust, there is the power of attorney, there is the advanced health care directive, and lastly, your HIPAA authorization, which is um, related to medical consent. So any one of those things um, uh, missing more specifically when you look at your, your trust, the drawbacks for that is going, well, it potentially will lead to probate. The problem with probate and the drawbacks of probate is as what we listed here. So some of the things I want to bring up. So you, you brought up the fact that, oh yeah, these celebrities spend this much money, this millions of dollars doing this and that. Okay? The reason why we know about it is because anything that's probated is a public process. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when Prince passed away, we knew exactly how much of what, what his estate was worth. At the end, after, um, I think it was after five years, six years, they said, oh, well, his estate is worth 150 million. We know that he's, he's, he paid over 60, close to $70 million in estate tax. We knew that of the 45 people that showed up to say that they were either his, his wife, his spouse, his children, or whatever else, they narrowed it out to six. By the time it was all done, okay, two of them passed away. The four now we knew split up the 60 something million dollars that was left. And, and I go, that's a public process, right? Like people hear about it. And we talked about it earlier. There, he's not the only celebrity that passed away in the last five years that had a whole lot of money. And I go, why you don't hear about anybody else is because they did their planning. So it becomes a public process. You 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 essentially will put a notice out, you know, that says so and so passed away. Anybody, family, extended family, the general public, anybody that's in the area and wants to find out, can come and find out exactly who's going to get what, who you owe money to, who's going to. So it's a big mess. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about when you don't plan, okay, and then now it goes to probate is. The, the, the laws and the courts will tell you who gets your things. Okay. So ultimately, it's not what the person who, you know, um, passed away would want. So the court ultimately decides if there's nothing in place, what, where the assets go, right? Yes. The law is already, um, you know, it's written in the law and they have all the different scenarios. Okay. Um, if I ask you right now, right? What is the divorce rate? Okay, step back. If I asked you, um, what is a nuclear family? What would you say that would be? I have no idea. No, a nuclear family, right? A traditional family is husband, wife, couple kids, okay, maybe a dog in one house, right? So it's husband, wife, and their children. Mm -hmm. that, is a, that is a typical traditional family. That may be true about 20, 30 years ago. Today's type, if the divorce rates for the last 20, 30 years has been well over 50% and people remarry for a second, remarry for a third time, okay, that's no longer your traditional family. Family makeups nowadays are blended. Yes. And the more blended your family is, the more the rules and the laws are going to be different if you don't plan. So we call this now, when it goes to probate and there is um, no designation in terms of who will get your things, we call it intestacy. Okay. So um, the Black Panther passed away, right? And he didn't have his estate plans done. And um, so with regards to his estate, um, his wife and his parents ended up sharing. His, his estate because they didn't have any children. 
And the rules now, even in the state of Hawaii, it's there is many uh, things and many of factors. Bottom line is you lose control. Yeah, it may not go to, and worse yet, if you were the spouse that was supporting now, okay, like you lived, you as as a spouse um, are, are married. And then, um, you know, you guys come from a blended family. You lived in your home for the last 20 years. And then your spouse passes away. Lo and behold, that property is not in both your names. Guess what happens then? If he had children that was not in the same, um, not the same children that you guys share, okay, and he had, um, you know, children from a different relationship, the rules would be so different, okay? In that now, if you look at assets, so in this situation, the laws just recently changed, but so you would get, it, let's say $200,000, and then now you and your spouse's children would split half of the asset. You've been paying mortgage for the last 20 years, okay? Mm -hmm. The biggest asset you hold is probably what? Your house. Yeah, definitely. Especially, I mean, especially in Hawaii, right? Now, now, imagine the scenario, your spouse passes away, okay? Then now the property goes into probing, okay? okay. You get, um, and forgive me, I just forgot the actual numbers. The laws just, just changed it. Um, let's just say, for example, okay? You get the first $150,000. This is the old rule. Okay, and then now half would be split between you and then your late spouse's children. Your house today is worth a million dollars. Okay, that child, that those children that you may not even know about live on the mainland. Well, this is actually things that happen fairly regularly in our office okay? that live on the mainland. And then they say, um, where's my share? Okay, so in a million dollar house, Let's say now there's eight after you, that'll get your 150,000. And let's say there's 800,000 left. That means 400,000 it will go to you, 400,000 of it goes to your spouse's children. Then the, the children get to demand and state, I am rightfully the heir to this $400,000 estate. Oh, Sheena, do you have $400,000 laying around today? Almost not, not right now. <laughs> So guess what happens to your family, your property? Goes to probate. No, it gets sold. Oh my goodness. And then because the proceeds, right, as in, as the heir, as the beneficiary, as, as the heirs, you have a right to. And then if you, meaning you spouse, is not able to find the funds or the resources to pay me off, then now that requires you to okay, sell the property, sell the asset. So very, very, um, to me, I go, it's a travesty. Um, it, it's not like, it, it creates so many, many problems that can be simply avoided by just doing the plan. Mm -hmm. And, you know, since you have been doing this for a while, what, what is the general cost of starting in the state plan? What does the process look like? I know each process is different depending on the individual, if they're married, if they have children. But generally, can you walk us through the process of how fast it'll take, um, you know, what is the general cost of starting in a seat plan? And of course, I know they can reach out to you, but yeah, can you share? Given what is the potential consequences in that planning, to me, I, well, the investment of being prepared and actually taking care of your planning is will, will be astronomically much, much more beneficial than to wait. For here at our firm, um, our rates are from 1800 for a single person to 25. Well, the me we have different levels of planning. Most of our families, okay, will will fall into either the essential or family type of planning. For a single person, it's 1800 or 2500 For a family, I mean a married couple, it's 2900 to 3900 and that's flat rate. Now, 
if you want to really look at what does that translate to, let me share with you that the cost of probate, okay, just to uh, to to do a simple probate costs about six to eight thousand dollars already. And when I say simple, what I mean is nobody fighting, nobody. There's no issues, and I go it, but yet the potential, okay, um, you know, all the potential things that could arise can make it much much more expensive. So while well, a simple probate with no one arguing, six to eight thousand dollars, and to just plan in advance and get, um, you know, a proper estate plan. You said it averages around, you know, fifteen hundred to around, you know, three thousand on the high end. Thirty nine hundred for a family plan. And now, if it wasn't a simple probate and it went crazy, that is when we see. I mean, of course, celebrities, they have a lot of assets, but that's when it just prolongs for a very long time. Is that correct? Yeah. And it's funny you say that because we see the millions and millions and most, if not everyone would say, yeah, but that doesn't, I, I, I don't relate to that. Okay? Like, I don't have that. I'm simple. I have one house. Mm-hmm. And I would argue it's much, much more important for all our modest families to do their planning because if the cost is the same regardless if you are ultra rich or you have a you know you have one property you know a couple of accounts if the cost to probate is the same and I go how much is fifty thousand dollars to a, a ten million dollar uh, estate a drop in the bucket what is fifty thousand dollars and you have two three hundred thousand dollars to pass on to your children is very significant so I would argue it's much, much more important for our modest families to properly plan. And, you know, when you talk about properly planning, you don't need to own, you know, um, a house or any, like, anything like that. Any, everybody needs an estate plan, right? It's necessary. It's something that's really important. And regardless if you're ultra rich or, you know, like you said, um, you do have a single home. If you don't even own any property, you should still get an estate plan and the importance of everything that comes along with it. And um, I know you had one last slide to share, right? And is this your quote that you have? I, I, I honestly believe that I, this is an exercise in liberties. So if you don't plan, as I mentioned earlier, the state of Hawaii will plan for you. So we need to protect, right, our privacy, protect the things, you know, that we want to leave for our families. I feel like whenever I have a conversation with you or, you know, talk to you about anything in life, it's very valuable to me. And I end up, you know, gaining lots of lots of knowledge from you. And my biggest takeaway from today's conversation is that knowing less can cost a lot more. And you know, you just don't know what you don't know. So regardless, if we always, I mean, I see it all the time on social media of celebrities, but it doesn't, you don't have to be a celebrity where this one happened to you. You could just be, you know, a regular person like me in Hawaii and an estate plan is still important. So thank you for all your knowledge, Amphi, and, you know, just taking your time on day to share with um, me and all of us. It was my pleasure. Thank you, Shana. Thank you for being on the show. Hope to see you all at the next episode of Money Talks. I'm Shana Park, a Gen Z inspiring lives of liberties. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching ThinkTech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.